Hey, Paul, Stumptown Axes. Uh, I got to film a little bit of a stressful uh, process. It's going to be putting the old wedge in the uh, in the kerf, and this is mounting the the heads here. Um, it's probably the most, maybe second most stressful part of this. Uh, maybe the number one is cutting the actual kerf, which is like the the line that we cut on. Uh, on the axe uh, to to give it room to put the uh, put the wedge in. That gets pretty stressful because you got to line it up. You want it straight front to back. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you a little bit of my technique. Some people's technique is different, but uh, you might find it interesting. You might learn something. You might teach me something in the comments. A um, couple things I have. So I have a wedge. This particular one is going to be rosewood really nice grain here and as you can see it is not symmetrical i actually shape my wedges a lot of people don't um they put like kind of a square wedge in there and i've seen some people that have beautiful outcomes with it i haven't had great outcomes all the time uh so what you'll notice is like on a on the eye of an axe you got a little nice little rounded kind of beady section and then a smooth little section in the back and what you'll see uh, my technique for you know testing the shape and this is an eye that's similar to the one here um, I'll actually put it upside down and kind of start creeping up and see how far I'm getting that wedge driven and, and see where the the snug and the fit is and I'll do that to both sides kind of to make sure I got that curve of the shape just right. Um, the other thing I'll do is I always draw a line and that's gonna kind of dictate to me or at least kind of let me know, of course it's on the wrong side here, but it kind of lets me know, um, I know a minimum or give or take a few millimeters, I wanna be around that line. If I go too deep past that, I'm probably no good there. You don't wanna go all the way down uh, in the curve. I'm cutting my curves somewhere in the two thirds of the length of, of the eye here. Um, there's a lot of, or little debate about that. Most people are, are somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so supplies, then I'll do this. And what I'm gonna try and do is show you the tapping in this process. So I, I normally use like a, a little rubber mallet and I kind of get it going. Um, sometimes if it's shaped really nice and I got a really good taper on the wedge, it'll actually go in fairly deep um, and not too much work uh, on the second part. The second part, I'm gonna take it to the ground and I'm gonna pound it upside down. So this will lay on the ground, axe will be upside down, and I'm gonna be hitting it from that side, uh, palm swell side, the unfinished palm swell. This is why a lot of times you'll see people not have these quite done until uh, a head is mounted. But I'm gonna smack that, and with that, I'm gonna do a dead blow uh, rubber mallet, because uh, you don't wanna send too, too much shock. You want some steady, even pressure um, as it's driven in. And as far as supplies, I actually got a new, boom, look at that. That is a soap dispenser with boiled linseed oil welcome to steal that idea. I'm sure I stole it from somebody, but I'm not sure who. Uh, and I'll also use a little glue. I started using glue ooh, maybe six months ago. You know, I don't know. Uh, I feel a little bit better about it. I kind of do a hybrid thing where I'm putting it a, a little bit of glue on this side and a little bit of boiled linseed oil on the edges. I find that those are going to, you know, really hit friction pretty quickly on the front uh, trail and leading edges there. And I think that about covers it. I'm gonna try and move the camera down to the floor. I don't know if I'll stop or keep rolling and you guys can kind of see that process. Um, yeah, let's, uh, so first I'll put like a little dab of glue. So I'm not gonna go crazy with this. And then I put just a touch of boiled linseed oil. So I'm doing like that at the most. That on both sides. This glue st sticks pretty good. Um, it sets up fairly quick. I started using glue. I used to just do boiled linseed oil. A lot of people do that. I like that. They slid in, everything was lovely. But I just kind of wanted a little extra, extra stick to it. But I, I noticed when I first started doing it, 
I would, uh, it, it gets fairly tacky, fairly quick. And I wanted a little less friction. And so now I'm grabbing my boiled linseed oil just a little bit. So just a little bit there on that leading it or trailing edge, a little bit on the leading edge. And that's just to help it seed a little bit. I don't want to put a whole bunch around the glue and get that all stuck. So positioning, I said this is stressful, it's stressful because you don't want to mess it up and you're out of time with the glue, right? So kind of set that up there. And so I'm pretty happy with that front to back. Gonna start driving it. Wanna make sure I don't get stuck on the inside of the curve or the outside. Mostly you want it on the outside because this is going to go, and this is going on pretty nicely. Not using that much force. Just kind of tapping it and getting it going. You can, oh yeah, you can hear it start to crackle and pop a little bit. That's just a little stress on the wood. It's not getting any cracks on there. All right, sorry for the edits, but family calls. So still pounded in, no time lapse. Starting to get stiff now. So I'm gonna switch over and go down to the ground uh, because now I'm gonna use a little bit more force to get it in there. And I don't wanna put the force on the wedge and have the wedge split. Uh, so this is gonna go upside down. Actually, let me see if I can just, let me see if we can bring you with me with this all right so hopefully this angle is okay i probably should have planned ahead with a little bit better lighting or something but you can see my line there i'm going to just start smacking it from the top and hopefully we'll see it start to go in oh yeah so we're starting to get it it's getting a little bunched up at the front so i'm going to give it a little bit of Lift from the back. Oh yeah, that is looking good. So we got good contact. Oops, sorry. Good contact from the front. Good contact in the back. We'll give it a few more whacks here. And I'm hitting this thing pretty decent. You know, I'm, I want to make sure that thing's nice and deep in there and we got a good solid fit. The glue is going to help it stay put. All right. So that just now my line has disappeared. Now I got a little wiggle room. I always kind of give, you know, give myself, I don't know, three, four millimeters, something like that. Uh, so I don't have to, you know, so I'm not worried about like if it disappears or I feel like I need to get it in a little further or just a, you know, gut instinct there. All right. I am pretty happy with that. I got a little peeling in the back there, a little peeling in the front, which means we have a tight fit. And uh, I'll rotate to the top. Hold on. All right. So we can see now back in the bench or in the vise, the... We've got a little bit of curling here and some nice, nice uh, compression. And we're going to rotate the back. We're looking at this edge down here. You see there's no gaps in the back. we got a nice little bit of curling. You know, sometimes it's not going to be. I'm, I'm really happy with this, actually. Sometimes you'll have some little space there. But if the wedge is in there secure, it's not going anywhere. And it's just a little bit of insurance. But I think this... We got a nice good fit. All right, so this is basically done. We're set. Um, now where there's going to be trimming. Uh, there's not a ton of debate, but maybe some about what you should do. Some people cut it flush. I like to leave uh, it fairly proud. So I'll trim just a few millimeters below um, where the ax goes through. And uh, I like it mushrooming out. So I like that on the surface area to really be as broad as possible to try and hold 
that is tight. Um, some people like the flush look, uh, only time will tell. Um, I don't use any uh, metal, nothing like that at this point. I know some people do some decorative stuff that looks really cool. I just haven't done that yet. Uh, and I don't like the metal wedges. I haven't needed them at this point. Uh, you know, down the road, if something loosens up, maybe you would do that. Um, but we could talk through that if, you know, like several years down the road, it starts to loosen up. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how this went in. Um, we'll end up cleaning up some of these curls. I use an X-Acto knife, uh, just kind of trimming it and polish it up. Uh, you got to always make sure, you know, when you're using a glue that you're you're getting it off the surfaces that you don't want it on uh, as it dries. But here, I already already uh, already took it off of the back here. So, cutting it flush. A lot of times, what I'll do when I'm trimming it, I'm going to hold it, and I want that to kind of. You know, some of these axe heads depends on the pattern. You know, this one goes up, you know, and I like it just to be kind of level to the uh, to the ground um, as you'd hold it or as it'd be mounted maybe on the wall or something. Everyone has their own personal uh, preference on how that goes. But yeah, one more time, just kind of came out nice. It's gonna look good. Uh, maybe I'll uh, trim this. Basically, I'll put it in a vise, uh, just like so. And I just, I used to use a jigsaw, uh, and then I'll polish the top. I take a little time to do that. Normally, I'm using, uh, you know, something like a, a 200, 300, um, then a 400, and then even sometimes just touching it up a little bit with a, a 2000 to really get it uh, kind of nice and glowy. And then, uh, you know, some of my other videos you've probably seen. When you, know, you put the oil on there, it kind of looks real nice. Uh, it really makes the wood pop and the grains pop. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the stressful part done. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty stoked. Um, that's going to be nice. It's going to be a great piece. And uh, yeah, time for beer. So yeah, if you have any more questions or I'll try and film some more stuff. i got a couple of different projects I'm thinking of. Uh, check out the Instagram. It's uh, at Stumptown Axes. Uh, there is a website, but it's still building. Uh, we have some art that's going to be finished up hopefully this week, maybe next week. Um, maybe by the time this video comes out, uh, where we're going to do some other stuff, other fun stuff. Um, yeah. So if you have questions, put them in the comments. Um, reach out to me directly. Uh, hopefully this helps you. And for folks that already bought Axes, thanks again. And hopefully this gives you a little bit more... Uh, info on how it was put together and kind of some of the stress that goes behind it. Uh, but we like our successes, you know? All right. Take care guys. All right. Thought I'd add on just the finished after the trimming, just one real quick. And this is pre oil and, uh, haven't quite cleaned up the curlies yet, but it came out great. Good seat. And, um, I even on accident trimmed it with a little bit of that, instead of level like I normally do, it was just an accident, but I actually like it on this, on this one. It has a, such this broad cheek to it that it actually has a nice, uh, nice little form. But there you go, hope it helps.